Hello, my name is James Collier, and I'm from Collier RV or I-94 RV in Illinois. I'm going to be your host today. We're going to go through the use and operation of the Chateau Class C's that we have in our rental department. We rent three models. We rent a 22B, a 26B, and also a 30D, which is a bunkhouse. All three are going to operate basically the same way. There will be some minor differences from one to the other as far as where things are located, but the general idea, everything operates exactly the same way. Let's go. First thing we're going to talk about is plugging the motorhome into AC power. Towards the back of the motorhome on the driver's side, to be a compartment, we open that up and we have our detachable power cord. The power cord, like I said, is detachable. There is a little plug that comes out towards the front of the compartment. We remove that and then we want to feed the power cord up through that hole. The easiest way to do that, where you don't have to drag the whole thing through the mounting hole, is just take the end that attaches to the motorhome run it up from underneath helps if you have a helper for this part cord connects onto the plug inside the motorhome give it a little clockwise twist and then there is a ring a threaded ring that you tighten up hold the cord in place so it doesn't fall out after you've got the power cord attached to the motorhome, now we're going to actually look at plugging it into the power outlet. Uh, Chateaus use a 30 amp RV outlet, which is going to correspond to the 30 amp pole outlet. It's generally a good idea to have the circuit breakers turned off on the power pole when you plug in a motorhome. Plug it in, then turn on the power to the outlet. Now you should have power to the inside of the motorhome. A good way to tell if you've got power to the inside of the motorhome is to check the microwave. And if you have a display lit up on the microwave, we know that we have good power to the interior. If you end up in a situation where there is no 30 amp service available, say you're loading up at your house and you want to plug it into a standard 20 amp home outlet, then we do provide you with a little adapter that goes between the 30 amp RV plug and the 20 amp residential plug. If you're at a place where you don't have AC shore power available or you're driving and you want to run the rooftop air conditioner, the motorhome does have an onboard AC generator. There is an automatic transfer switch in the motorhome that's automatically going to go from the shore power cord and switch over to generator power. That switch does have about a one minute delay on it. So kind of like we talked about when you plug in the power cord, look at the microwave and when the microwave lights up then you know that the power switch, the transfer has gone over, you're good to go, you've got power inside. We're going to talk about in the other section um, the 110 volt circuit breakers that are inside the motorhome. There is also a 110 volt circuit breaker on the generator. If the generator is running and you have no power inside and everything seems to be good, you can remove this cover right here. Just lifts off and then there is a circuit breaker located out here right next to the start stop switch. There's a little switch back in here. There's a yellow oil plug. Right in between that and the start stop switch there's a circuit breaker and you pull that out to turn it on. One note, one other note of caution, you never want to run the generator with this door removed. You can run it long enough to reset the breaker but as soon as you get the breaker reset you want to put that right back on. The reason is this cover is actually an air duct and that's what keeps the engine cool. If you run the generator without this cover on, it will overheat and it will stop. And if it does stop from overheating, 
it may not run again through the rest of your trip. Uh, one more note, if the generator is running, it is designed not to drain your fuel tank completely of fuel. The generator will automatically shut down once the level of fuel in the tank gets down around a quarter. So if it shuts off for no reason and it doesn't seem like it wants to restart, turn on the key, take a look at where the fuel gauge is, and if that's down at that quarter mark or right around it, more than likely we've run out of fuel for the generator. The reason they do that is so you still have a quarter tank of fuel in the gas tank to get the motorhome where you need to go to get more. All right, now we want to take a moment and talk about the motorhome's 12 volt electrical systems. The motorhome has two separated 12 volt systems. We have a chassis system and we have a coach system. The chassis system is basically battery under the hood, takes care of starting the engine, running the lights, basically all the functions that would normally be associated with the vehicle. The coach system takes care of all of the interior lights of the motorhome, operation of the water pump, basically everything in the coach side of the motorhome is dependent on having 12 volt power in some way. With that in mind, there is a little switch right inside the entry door. This is a battery disconnect. This should be left on at all times when the motorhome is being used. When you're driving, when you're parked, doesn't matter. This should always be left on. That leaves the battery in line with the systems of the motorhome. That way we know that everything is going to work. The, the coach battery gets charged when the engine is running. It gets charged whenever the motorhome is plugged into AC shore power. And it gets charged whenever the generator is running, providing AC power to the motorhome. The chassis battery only gets charged when the engine is running. So that's just, just a small note to remember. If for some reason the chassis battery goes dead while you're parked, we have an automatic internal jump starting system right here on the dash. There's a little switch over on the left side it says auxiliary start or emergency start. If you push that up and hold it up while you're turning the key to start the engine, you will engage the coach batteries along with the chassis battery to get the engine started so you can get going. Somewhere in the motorhome there's going to be what we call a power distribution panel in this 26B it happens to be on the rear dinette base. Basically this is where all of your power is distributed from. We've got a series of 120 volt circuit breakers or we've also got 12 volt fuses. If you've got something that isn't operating, isn't functioning, then basically this is the first place you're going to look. Make sure the breaker hasn't popped or fuse hasn't blown. If the fuses go out, then there is a little LED light next to the one that goes out, so you know which one is suspect. So you open that, you just push it, it pops down, close it, just push it, and it stays closed. The motorhome does have what we call a systems monitor panel. It has tank monitors that tell you what the level of your gray water, black water, and fresh water tank are, as well as the liquid propane and the fresh water. So you've just got a series of buttons here. You push those and hold them and then there's a series of lights that come on here tell you what those levels are. Uh, there's an interior start and stop switch for the generator. We've got on and off switches. The motorhome has holding tank heaters for the black and gray water tank. More than likely you're not going to be out in cold weather where you're going to need these, but if you were below freezing, those can just be flipped on very easily. Uh, main control for the fresh water pump is here. We can turn that on and that'll give us 
pressure to our faucets from the fresh water tank if we're using our onboard water. Then we have the controls for the hot water heater. Hot water heater operates on either LP gas or it also will operate on the AC electric and it is okay to run both at the same time. That's how you get real quick recovery with hot water. If we turn on the LP gas, that's going to fire up on its own. Uh, you can probably hear it in my microphones here. Um, there is a light on here. If the light on the water heater comes on, that means the water heater stopped working. Basically, that's a fault code. Um, at that point, you would want to turn it off and then turn it back on again. Uh, wait like five seconds after you turn it off, then turn it back on again, and it should fire right up. The 110 volt side of the water heater, very simple. You just flip the switch on and that will go. Anyway, that's the monitor panel. This is where the motorhome's LP tank is. Easy way to tell which compartment holds the LP tank. It's the one without locks on it. They want you to be able to open that, shut off the gas in a hurry if that's ever, ever needed. So we open that up, LP tanks right here. There's a gauge on the side of it that you can tell how much gas is in it. LP tanks only hold up to 80% of their capacity. You will never see that gauge go all the way to the up. It's going to stop at about the three-quarter mark. And if it's there, then you know you've got a full LP tank. Um, when you go to fill the LP, uh, which you can do at, say, a lot of uh, Flying J truck stops, or a lot of places like that have LP available, otherwise you just go to a regular LP supplier. They're going to want you to turn off all of the LP appliances in the motorhome during the time that the LP tank is being filled. Also, when you're filling the gas tank on the motorhome, you also want to turn off all of the LP appliances. We don't want any open flames burning anywhere when we're filling a fuel tank. So there's just an on and off valve here. Open it up just like a faucet knob. Now you've got LP to the system. Otherwise, if you're filling it or filling the fuel tank, generally a good idea to turn this off. That way you know all the LP appliances are going to shut down. There is also a little fitting in here. It says Santee Flush. What that does, uh, when we talked about the holding tanks, we said we were going to shoot, we were going to drain the black water tank first. This provides a place you can hook water pressure to it. There's a little shower head inside the black water tank. Hook water pressure to this, that's going to rinse the inside of that black water holding tank. You want to make sure that that black water valve is open anytime you've got water hooked to this. If you open, if you open the water <laughs> to this thing and that valve is closed, it's going to come out through the vent on the roof and that is not going to be a pretty sight. Now we're going to talk about the motorhome's fresh water system. We've got a hose that we provide. It uh, looks like we're providing blue hoses. They're not green. RV freshwater hoses come in either blue or white, or in some cases kind of an off-white. You don't want to use a green garden hose. A green water hose will put a rubbery, plasticky, silicone-y taste into the water. The reason they use these special colored hoses is that they do not impart a bad taste into the water. Uh, if you notice on the end of the hose there's a long or well a short brass fitting that is a water pressure regulator. So that will come right off otherwise if you're hooking up water to the motorhome you put that on there's a fitting marked city water connection on the exterior. Pop the cap off of that. Connect the hose, or connect the regulator right to it. Turn on the water, you're good to go. Uh, little tip here, it's generally a good idea to make sure there are no faucets open 
or anything that's going to allow the water to just flow straight through. Uh, otherwise, you could walk into a mess when you get back inside. For the fresh water tank, if you want to carry water with you, fresh water, fresh water with you, take the pressure regulator off. Then there's a, another fitting on the outside that has a cap on it, and it says potable water only. That's where you fill the fresh water tank. Basically, you're just going to stick the end of the hose in there, turn on the water, and then when it's full, it's just going to overflow right out back through the fitting and you will see it draining out underneath the motorhome because there is an overflow pipe down there. If you get some water and it's not good, then down here mounted on the bottom of the sidewall, there's just a little black plastic valve. You can open that up and that'll drain the tank, then close it and refill it with better water when you get somewhere where they have good water. Now we want to talk about how to drain the motorhome's wastewater holding tanks. A motorhome has two wastewater systems. It has what we call a gray water tank and it has what we call a black water tank. The black water tank is everything that comes from the toilet when you flush it and the gray water tank holds everything else, shower runoff and water from the sinks. We provide you with a sewer hose. Sewer hose has two ends, male end and a female end. Female end attaches to the motorhome. Which goes right on and clips on. And then the male end is made for this little guy right here. This is a device that will seal the dump hose to the dump station. Dump stations are generally going to have threaded, you can see the thread sign here, generally going to have threaded fittings where you put the water in. So you want to put this on the dump station, tighten it down to the dump station. Then we're going to connect the hose to it. And that's going to create a good seal right to the dump station. Uh, like I said, you can dump both holding tanks at one time or typically your gray water is going to fill way faster. Uh, so you can dump the gray water tank on its own. If you're going to dump the black water, then, like I said, you want to make sure that's full. If you are going to dump the black water, that's the one you do first. In this case, the valve is up underneath. There are two valves. You can see them. The one is bigger than the other. The big one is always the black water. So give that a pull. Pull to drain it. You're going to hear the water flowing through. Um, you're going to also know there, you're going to feel the weight of the water in the hose. Once the tank is done draining and you no longer feel any pressure on the hose or water weight on the hose, go ahead and close that black water valve. Then we're going to proceed to pull the gray water valve. And the reason we do it in that order, we put the black water through first, then we run the gray water through. The gray water rinses off the inside of our hose for us. A few words of advice here. Never dump a black water holding tank until it is absolutely full. If you want to dump the black tank and it's not full to the top, you want to add water to it before you dump it. The reason for that, the more flow you have coming out of there, the better everything drains out. When you're done, go ahead and close, close that valve. Take the hose off. You want to put the cap back on. And then it's generally a good idea to run a little fresh water down through the sewer hose just to kind of clean it out some more, which the motorhome does have an outside shower for that purpose. Otherwise, there's usually non-potable water available at the dump station. You can just rinse this out. The sewer hose stores in the rear bumper. There's a little rubber plug that comes out of the square steel bumper. You pull that, slide the sewer hose in, put the rubber plug back in, you're good to go. The seal flange, that you keep inside the compartment. That's not going to fit in the bumper. All right. 
Okay, now we're going to talk about the motorhome's bathroom. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about the toilet right now. Um, this is what drops into the black water tank. Uh, basically, you've got a flush pedal that you push down to flush the toilet. I had mentioned that you want to make sure that black water tank is completely full before you go to dump it. You can add water to the toilet by pushing down on the pedal and just run it halfway. That will add water to the bowl. Otherwise, if you push it all the way down, that opens it to dump through. Um, so you can add water to the tank that way or just continue to use it until the tank is full. Uh, an important thing to remember, I don't have a bottle of it with me, but we provide you with toilet chemical. You always want to um, put precharge the toilet with or precharge the black water system with toilet chemical before you use it. And basically that's going to be a blue liquid. You dump eight ounces of it in there, flush it through, add some water. So you start with a little bit of water in the tank. And then that way that, that helps keep the odor down and it kind of digests the things that are in the tank. Uh, we also provide you with some Aquasoft toilet paper. This is actually made for the RV toilet. Uh, basically it uh, breaks down at, after it gets wet. It breaks down faster than regular home type toilet paper. If you do need to pick up toilet paper when you're out on the road, just make sure you pick up paper that's just plain white. If you use just plain white toilet paper, that will work in a pinch if you can't get the RV toilet paper. And just don't use anything that has any perfumes or dyes in it, you know, like if it's pink or whatever. You want to use just plain old-fashioned white tissue. And that, that'll prevent having help prevent having problems dumping holding tanks. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about in here is the motorhome shower. Uh, basically, hot and cold, just like you'd have at your house. There is on the shower head what we call a water saver feature. And basically, there's just this little rod that pushes one way or the other. When you're taking a shower in a motorhome, Obviously, you want to avoid as much water use as possible to avoid overfilling the gray tank too early. Uh, so, when the wa unfortunately, I don't have water in here to demonstrate, but you can, you turn this one way, and it's going to give you a full shot out of the shower head. Otherwise, if you push it in like that, it's still going to let a little bit of water through. There's just going to be a trip, a little bit of a drippage going drip, 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 drip. That's just to remind you that it is turned on. So basically you take a shower. Um, if you're at somewhere where you got full hookups, you can just let her fly. Otherwise, if you're actually using just the tank, then you engage the water saver between rinses. So you rinse yourself, turn it back off, rinse yourself again, turn it back off. And then when you're all done, turn the faucets off again. All right. And of course you got your shower curtain, just held by a magnet. Anyway, uh, there we go. The motorhomes do have slide outs. The 22B and the 26B each have one slide out. The 30D has two. They all operate the same way. Basically there's a switch on the wall. You want to make sure that there's no obstructions between the slide out flange and the inside wall. If you run the room out and there's say a book down in there or something, you can damage it um, and you'll tear up the book pretty good too. Uh, anyway, so you check, you always want to check, make sure you've got a clear unobstructed path. Also, same thing on the outside, you want to make sure there's not a tree in the way or something. Another thing, it's a good idea to Make sure you get all utilities hooked up, all your utilities hooked up, water and electric and so forth, um, before you operate the slide outs. Anyway, it's just a matter of there be switches on the wall. This one happens to be right off the foot of the bed. And you operate it 
and this instance we push the switch up, the room goes out. The slide outs are a little bit sensitive. You really want to run them the entire width or the entire length of their travel. You don't want to get them part way and then stop. You can throw them out of time that way and then they'll start to run a little bit crooked possibly. So we want to run that all the way till it hits the outside wall. All right, that's done. On the 22B and the 26B, we have a folding mattress. Basically, it just, uh, this one's wrapped up. Oops. This one's still in its plastic, so. Yeah, I guess it will fold over. Anyway. That just folds over and makes your king or your queen bed. Uh, I believe the 30D uses a fixed mattress that doesn't fold, but the 22B, the 26B have the folding one. And then when you're ready to go, flip that over, and then you run the room in. In this case, you would push the switch down. And once again, you run it all the way till the end of its travel. Here's the control for the motorhome's heating and cooling system. Uh, it's thermostat on the wall, controls the furnace and the rooftop air conditioner. Thing to keep in mind, the air conditioner does need AC power so you've either got to have the unit plugged into shore power or you've got to have the generator on in order for the air conditioner to work. The furnace operates on 12 volt so that will operate no matter what. And it is okay to operate the furnace while you're driving. Uh, if you're in super cold weather that's, that's how you keep the inside of the motorhome warm so you can run the furnace while you're driving. We've got basically two switches and then a slider control for the temperature. We want to, right now we're turned on off. If we want to cool the motorhome down, we push that over to where it says cool. We leave the fan set to where it says automatic. You can control, you can control the speed of the fan here, but we recommend you just leave it on automatic all the time. And then your slide switch controls what your shutoff temperature will be. So in this case, I just turned it down all the way. And I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the air conditioner kicked on. If we want to heat the motorhome, then we run the system switch over to the right where it says heat. Once again, leave the fan on where it says auto. Then turn the temperature up. The furnace floor will come on, and after about 30 seconds, you will hear the burner kick on. That means your furnace is working. To turn everything off, just turn it back to where it says off. All right. Okay, now I want to talk about the motorhome's RV refrigerator. The refrigerators in these motorhomes operate either off of AC current from the shoreline or from the generator, or they operate on LP gas. There are two switches on the front of the refrigerator. Uh, you have just an on-off switch. Turn it on or turn it off. Then the other switch chooses between running on automatic, in which case it will automatically operate on AC if you're plugged in, or it will automatically switch to gas when you unplug the motorhome. And it is okay to run it on gas all the time. In fact, uh, you can, with this switch, push the button to where the automatic light goes out. Now it's going to be operating on gas only. Uh, the refrigerator, the RV refrigerator, does not operate like the refrigerator in your house. You want to turn this on or make sure that it's turned on a few hours before you're going to load it to get ready to go. Uh, the RV refrigerator takes about 
four to five hours to actually get cold inside. Uh, it also helps, uh, since it does not have quick recovery, it also helps if you put in food that's already cold, then the refrigerator will keep it cold. Another important thing to remember, the refrigerator will operate just fine when the motorhome is in motion. When the motorhome is parked, this refrigerator has, the whole motorhome, has to be level or as close to level as you can get it. And by that I mean probably a quarter to half a bubble on a carpenter's level. If the motorhome is not level and it's parked, then the refrigerator will stop cooling. Then when you start moving again, it'll start cooling again. But during that time you're parked, if it's on a hill or if it's, if it's in such a situation where it's not level, you are going to lose the ability for it to cool. And in fact, uh, usually in that case, we want you to turn it off if it's going to be parked off level. Okay, so remember, it doesn't get cold as fast as the house refrigerator does. Use pre-chilled food. Keep it level when it's parked and operate it on gas when you're driving. Remember to turn it off if you're filling fuel or if you're filling the LP. Okay, we're going to take a moment and talk about the motorhome's auxiliary sleeping areas. Uh, I'm going to start with the front overhead bunk. Comes with a ladder so that kids can climb up there or whoever's going to be up there can climb up there. The cushion basically just slides back, drops down in place here, and then the ladder hooks into those little uh, brackets here on the end of the bed. Uh, there also is a safety harness that hooks up just like a couple of seat belts. That's just there so that nobody rolls out and falls on the floor. Okay, if you're in a situation where you're going to use the sofa for sleeping, this is very simple. It's just what we call a jackknife sofa bed. Basically, you pull up on the inside edge, Pull it forward, drop it down, it flattens out. Of course, you want to push the seat belts down and through so that somebody isn't sleeping on those. And to put it back into being a sofa again, lift it, push in on it, drop it down, we are good to go. All right, the last sleeping area that we have is the dinette. And this is very simple. Basically, we lift the bottom cushions up and out of the way. And then there's a little lever on the bottom of the table. Take that and flip it over to the left. Push the table straight down. Then basically we just lay the cushions out to make a flat bed surface. Okay, and that's going to fold down. That's what makes our bed. To put it back together, you flip the cushions up out of the way, then you just very simply lift the table so it comes up all the way. Then you take that same lever that we turned to the left before, now you turn it to the right table's locked in place where it's not going to go down when you put weight on it. Drop your cushions back in place. Uh, you need to pull the seat belts out if you're going to be using them. Otherwise you can just leave them under there. And voila! You have a dinette bed. The motorhome does have a television mounted in the cab over bunk area and that's on a bracket that will swivel it against the wall to get it out of the way for sleeping. And there's basically a knob here, a knob on the top, a knob on the bottom that tighten up to hold that so it doesn't swing around. Anyway, you loosen those up, pull the TV around to where it needs to be to view it, 
And of course it uses a remote control just like any television. The motorhome does have a TV antenna. And TV antenna is located right up here in the front corner by the TV no less. You can adjust the antenna. You can rotate it to change the reception. I'm inside a building here. I'm inside a steel building. And right now it's getting one of our local stations just wonderfully. I've tried rotating it and it doesn't seem to change. But at any rate, if you're out in the wilderness somewhere, and you, maybe you can adjust it and get better reception. Um, you do need to, before you take off, you want to remember the little knob here. Push it up and push it in and then turn it. You want to turn it all the way clockwise. That way the antenna will be facing to the front of the motorhome. That, that's the position that it needs to be in for travel. Okay, now we're going to talk about the motorhome's power patio awning. Uh, the control for this is right inside the door. There's this little switch down by the floor that says awning on it. You push it up and the awning will roll out. Now this will not work if the key is turned on. It will not work if the coach battery disconnect is turned off. I'm going to go ahead and run this out. The way you know when it's out all the way, there's a little balance on the bottom of the roller tube. If that's pointed straight down or close to it, then you're extended all the way. You can drop the ends of the awning if you're in a situation where you're trying to get away from bright sunlight. Just go to the arms. Keep your, don't put your finger in the middle, but go to this little bar here pull it straight down and that's going to bring the ends of the awning down and hopefully get that annoying sunlight off of you. Another note of caution if you're going to be gone for the day or if there's a storm coming up first thing you want to do put the awning away. It only takes a few seconds to power it back in but you want to put this away so it doesn't get damaged if a storm is coming. Anyway, to put it in, you just uh, push the switch down, and in she comes. Now, if you notice, I didn't bother to straighten those adjustment arms. Those will automatically straighten themselves when you roll it up. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the sunlight, but there is also an LED light strip under the awning. Uh, you can turn that on to light up your campsite at night. Uh, one thing, you want to make sure you turn that off before you go out on the road. Otherwise, if you're driving at night, you're probably going to get some funny looks from people when they pass you, uh, letting you know that the light is on, and it runs pretty much the full length of the awning. So it actually puts out quite a bit of light. Anyway, turn that back off. Once again, I'm James Collier from Collier RV in Rockford, Illinois, and I-94 RV in Wadsworth, Illinois. We hope you learned a lot from this video. We hope it's helpful. We want our renters and basically any of our customers or any of anyone else's customers to really have a stellar experience with their RV. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below the video on the YouTube page. Um, in the meantime, like our video, uh, like us on our Facebook page. Uh, if there's anything we can do, give us a call to help. If there's anything we can do to help you with anything, give us a call at 1-800-828-4051, and we look forward to seeing you out on the road. Thank you.